Yo, 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 yo. Hey, we back, we back, we back with another with another video, fam. Literally a few hours before the madness. Before must win. Must win game. I don't think anybody cares how we win. I'll be honest. Like, listen, there was a period in the season where you cared about how Man United performed, whether they controlled the ball or not. Listen, when it comes to must win games, I don't care. Yeah, don't get me wrong. We'll definitely dissect it, but I, I don't care. Bro, Istanbul, Galatasaray, I need three points because I'll be honest, if man gets a draw, if man gets, uh, if, if we get a draw or we lose, it's game over. Like, it's literally game over. And the funny thing is, like, we've literally dug our own grave, I'll be honest, because Galatasaray away, Bayern Munich at home, there's there's a chance we win both games, which will be a miracle in my eyes. We win both games and we, we still don't qualify. I think if we win both games, we are guaranteed Europa League. I don't want Europa League, fam. I'll be real. I don't, I don't want Europa League, fam. So it's uh, it's crazy, I'll be honest. But it's not, it's not as crazy as what happened today, fam. I'll be real. Fam, how comes nobody told me that nowadays when you order something... The man that deliver it take a photo of you. I didn't know this shit. I thought it was like uh I thought it was something that they trialed out during COVID. Take a photo. Because all of my orders as of late, fam, that man just leave it outside my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't even open the door. Like, there have been times where I've been out for six hours. I come home, I just see a parcel sticking in the bushes. But it's madness. It's it's, it's a madness because today I'm I'm in the shower. Bro, I'm in the shower. I'm thinking calm. Like, I, I ain't got I ain't got no delivery. That like, usually DPD, the email man. Like, yo, we're we're gonna deliver between between the hours of 2 and 3 p.m. Bro, I'm jumping in the shower, I'm thinking calm. Like, you know what I mean? Bro, I come out of the shower, I get a notification on my phone. There's there's someone outside your house. I'm thinking, what? Like, huh? Like, it better not be the gas man. I don't open the door to them. But I was like, who's outside my house? Click on it. I see DPD dude, and I was thinking, oh, I thought I thought my order was coming on like Thursday, Friday. I was like, calm, it's come one day early, bro. I've just come out of the shower. Now you have to bear in mind when it comes to DPD, the man give you thirty seconds. It's like as soon as they come to your house, they set a timer, thirty seconds. If you're not there, they're taking your parcel, and then now you have to wait like another week. Bro, I got out of that shower, fam. I put my my dressing gown on. It was the closest thing to me, bro. I'm bro. Bro, I'm talking, just come out of the shower. Like, do the maths. Bro, I go running downstairs, open the door. I'm thinking, yeah, calm, like, just tell the brother hello. Yeah, like, I don't know, maybe sign something. And yeah, that's about it. Bro, I go downstairs, yeah. Man's already put the parcel on the floor, but he's just standing there. I'm thinking, at least, like, hold it in your hand, like, give it to me. Bro, I opened the door, parcels on the floor, fam. I bend down to pick you up. Man goes, yeah, bro. He take a photo of you, fam. My whole thigh is showing. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I didn't flash her, brother. But my whole thigh. Just a fat. Man, man said fat. No, 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 no. A muscly Arab thigh. Just sticking there. Bro, I'm thinking. Listen, I don't care. You know what I mean? I don't care. I got my parcel. Yeah? And it fit me well. But I'm just thinking, like, yo, whoever, whoever's on the receiving end, I don't know if it's like a... I don't know what the process is. Maybe they have to file it. Maybe then they just have to approve it. But I'm thinking, yo, like, if I was on the receiving end and I got the notification, like, yo, parcel number 2589 has just been delivered. And this is picture proof. And I just see a thigh. Thinking, bro... Thinking it's crazy. But anyway, let's get into the game. Let's get into the game. Let's get into the game. Must win. I'll be real. Must win. We have to win. Because my pride is on the line. My neck is on the line, bro. I'll be honest. And I'll, I'll be so real. Like I can turn it into I can turn it into a tactical show. Because I'm very familiar with Gala. I'm I'm so familiar with Gala. 
But I'll be so real, man. Like, I think the whole world is familiar with Gala. I think everybody's watched them. Like, I, I will be real in it, yeah. They are a team. I'll definitely say they're one of the three teams this year in the Champions League that have caught a lot of people by surprise in regards to how they play and all of that stuff. But I'll be so real, man. Like, I've watched them against Man United. I watch them. I, I watch the Turkish League, yeah. I've watched them against Bayern. I've watched them against Manchester United. I watched them against Alanya Spor. I watched them when they lost a few weeks ago to Hatay Spor. Bro, it's it's just a team of Premier League rejects. Premier League rejects that have reached a stage in their career where they can still have some sort of an impact in the Turkish Super League. But when it comes to the, the upper echelons, you know what I mean? It's just, nah, you ain't that guy. Bro, like... I'm not even trying to discredit them. I'll be so real. Like, when I watch them, it's like, it's such a familiar thing that I've seen. They are pressing animals. I'll be real. Their press is very good. They're all relentless, the way they press. Now, do I think it's the most structured of presses? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think it's the most structured. If anything, I think there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of gaps. And I'll be honest, like, when I watch them against Bayern Munich, Bayern, even though they deserved... Like, especially when they played them at the Knife Stadium, yeah, like, Galatasaray, there was a period where they deserved to maybe be 2 3 nil up. But it's, if you can handle playing out from the back and beating the opposition press, you will get a lot of joy against them. I swear to God, you will get so much joy. Because the crazy thing is, is that even when they beat us at Old Trafford, come the 90th minute, I'm just sat there fuming. Because, like, Onana's made mistakes. Defensively, we've made mistakes. But I'm like, they played well. But they played well because... Everybody was expecting the bare minimum. And that's why I said, I feel like they just caught everybody by surprise. Like everybody was just expecting them to turn up and just get battered. Like an easy three points. And I remember I said it, as soon as we drew against them, I was like, yo, this game's going to be difficult. They're going to they're gonna surprise a lot of people this year in the tournament. But we can beat them. I swear to God, like the game against Old Trafford, I was like, bro, like, I think... The thing that just ruined us against Old Trafford was the fact that the way Galatasaray like to play the game is they like to commit a lot of bodies forward. They like to uh, they like to press very high up the field. But if you can beat their press and you can play out of it, defensively, they're not that good. Defensively, they're not that good. I don't even think, like when we're watching them against Manchester United, like their players don't even get back. Like when I watch them, I get the vibe of a team where everybody wants to attack. Everybody wants to join in offensively. But when it comes to the defensive duties, a lot of them shy away. In particular, their front four. They play a 4-2-3-1. That front four, it don't track back. It just stays on the halfway line. Against Old Trafford, the amount of openings that we had, the amount of space that we had centrally. And I was thinking, listen, any other top team annihilates them. Like even when uh, Bayern Munich beat them, I watched them when they went to Istanbul. Gala played well. They didn't take their chances. But the last half an hour of that game, you can make a case. Bayern Munich should have scored five or six. They were just open. All of their energy was gone. There was no gas in the tank. It's like they gave you a good 60 minutes. After that, that's it. They're finito. And now they're just trying to survive. Bayern Munich capitalised. They had the players. They created opportunities and they had players that can... Convert those opportunities into goals. Manchester United, I could say the exact same thing when they came to Old Trafford. The thing that killed us is at Old Trafford, they turned it into like a very transitional game, end to end. Now, don't get me wrong, we flourish. But at the same time, I felt like at Old Trafford, if we had just taken the sting, if we had just killed the sting of the game, bopped the ball around, we could have broken them down. This Man United team is good on the transition, but at the same time, sometimes I feel like constantly relying on playing on the transition is our downfall. Because we, we've got players that can bop it around. Now, of course, do we bop it around like, like prime Barcelona? No. But against certain teams, even the level that we can bop the ball around, it's enough. Can we bop the ball around the way we do against the Manchester City and create opportunities? I don't think so. Because they're way more structured. They're way more compact. Their press is so much better. They've got better players on and off the ball. I'll be so real. We'll get a test right. Like the way we can bop the ball around, 
We can still carve them open. We can still create chances. But we need to control the game. And I'll be, I'll be real, like, as wild as it sounds, I'll be shocked if I'm here in a few hours telling you guys <laughs> that we lost. It, it's a must-win game, and it's a game that we can win. Don't get me wrong, like, of course, they'll probably have, like, 15 men against us. Because I'll be real, the atmosphere in that stadium alone is going to be crazy. It's going to be hostile. It's, it's going to be mad, I'll be honest with you guys. Because even when they play against the smaller teams, they turn up. But that's where, I'll be real, that's where the Man United players just have to block it out. You have to block out all the noise. You're there for what? 90 minutes and 90 minutes only. Go get the job done. Adios, amigo. That's it. But I'll be honest. Gallo, as much as it's their, it's, it's their strength, I'd also say it's a flaw. It, it, it's a weakness of theirs. It's their press. It's not the most structured. It's not the most compact when, when they do uh, turn over the ball. And I don't think it's... Like, like I've said it before, I don't think it's like the most... It's not a very strict press, if you know what I mean. Like, it's not a very effective one. It's a press that Man United can definitely play through. We can definitely play through this press. And once we do, that's when we've got all the time and space on the ball. But the problem is, is that Man United play in a similar way to Old Trafford, where we're, we're a calamity on the ball. We're erratic. We just want to get rid of it. We want to const constantly go along. Because I will be honest, Gala do play a relatively high line. Of course, when you come up against a team that has a high line, the opportunity is always there to go along because you're sitting down thinking, listen, if I get this one pass right, he's in one-on-one. -on -one. But I've always said it. Sometimes constantly passing the ball forwards isn't the right thing to do. Sometimes passing it around sideways, sometimes dragging the opposition out of, out of their position creates better goal-scoring opportunities. Because I'll be honest, let's be real. Let's be real. You can try and capitalise on a high line and constantly go forwards. The success rate isn't going to be that high. You're not always going to get the ball to the player that you want. And even if you do, there's no guarantee that he's always going to score or he's going to have the composure or he's going to get in a goal-scoring opportunity. Just play a team game. Play a team game. Stay calm. Stay composed. The opportunities will come. I can guarantee you of that. I don't think defensively they're amazing. I'll be like, of course, in the Turkish League, they're strong defensively. I don't think defensively they're amazing. I don't think they're compact. I don't think their press is structured. I think even offensively, even offensively, like, uh, I don't, I don't think they're that good. But that's where Man United have to capitalise. I think the midfield trio will be a make or break for, for Manchester United. I really do. I think, I think the midfield trio will be a make or break. I think Kobe has to start. Man, like, Kobe S stuff, fam. He has to start for me. Like, he's... <laughs> He's the only midfielder that we have that's like calm and composed on the ball, like a player that has some intelligence, like there's brains behind him. And it's crazy, like it's literally, it's, it's ludicrous, the fact that it's an 18, year, 19 year old in their, I wouldn't even say it's their breakthrough season, it's just their debut season. And they're being forced to now be the leader amongst men. We forced him, I'll be real, like don't get me wrong, this experience, he will learn from it a lot, but I just feel like, We've put so much pressure on his shoulders that now everybody's going into this game relying on him to be our saviour on and off the ball. And it's ludicrous. Like, it says a lot about Manchester United's recruitment. It says a lot about the current crop of players. The fact that the 18-year-old looks better than every single one of you, man. And some of you guys are senior pros that play, that play for your national teams, that have played in World Cups, Euros. You've played in the Champions League before. But the 18-year-old is outshining you guys. And he's bringing something to the table that none of you guys collectively have. So it's ludicrous, but I'll be real. Like, Kobe Esther has to start. Bruno will start. I think the third one is where United can either swing things in their favour or not. I'm not trying to see McTominay. I'll be real. That Project McTominay starting week in, week out because he provides something offensively and he's a player capable of scoring goals. Sweet. There was a period for it. Now the goals have dried up. Like he only scored, I think, in like two games in a row. And ever since then, 
he's being piss poor. Like, let's be real. He's being piss poor offensively. He's being piss poor off the ball. Because it's a game where I want United to control it. I really do. I want United to control it. I want as many players comfortable on the ball. Now, when I say players comfortable on the ball, I don't care if you're nothing special. Like, I don't care if you don't have that technical ability to carry the ball forwards, to break lines on a consistent basis. I just want somebody that can aid Kobe Yester in bopping the ball around. That's all I want. That's all I want. I want somebody that can complement his game in a sense. Because I'll be honest, against Everton, he literally had the one job of progressing the ball forwards and breaking lines. And I'll be honest, like it wasn't helping because the midfield players that we had around him weren't even playing to his strengths and getting him on the ball. I'll be honest, like he was relying on picking up the ball from the centre halves. If not, the other guys are constantly passing forward. And sometimes having two players good at retaining the ball and having that element of pause are where they'll stay calm. They don't always look for the forward pass. Now, whether they've got the quality for it or not, no. They just have that temperament to stay calm. And I'll be honest, that's why for me, the trio I would probably be, I'll do is Kobe Estar, uh, Amrabat and Bruno. I'll be real. And that's what it is. I think McTominay, I'm not trying to see. Everyone else is injured. So it's either Amrabat or, or McTominay. I think McTominay will be a good option. Like, of course, if things go sideways, because of course, if things go sideways and we're in need of a desperate goal, McTominay is a goal scorer. Right? Like, he's a goal scoring threat. If he's already on the pitch, he ain't offering you much after the 70th minute. Keep him as that final roll of the dice on the bench. Bring me Amrabat. Amrabat, he'll complement Kobe's game in a sense where he'll provide that, that protection. I don't think Amrabat is amazing, but against these guys, he can get the job done. He'll provide that protection. And if anything, it will... Amrabat in the first phase is decent. He's not as good as Kobe Esther, but he's decent. It's not always forwards, but... Most importantly, he will retain the ball. The thing I like about Amrabat is he's not the most flamboyant on the ball. Like He's not somebody that constantly looks for the Hollywood. No. Like, if anything, sometimes you're asking of it from him. Like, yo, try that diagonal. He plays to his strengths, but the problem is that the strengths are limited. But it's fine. In a game like this, I'm cool with it. I just want people that can stay calm and help us retain the ball against these guys. Because I will be honest, the one thing that we don't want to do, especially away from home... In a stadium like that, in an atmosphere like that, like these men are going to be fired up. We do not want to turn it end to end. In that stadium, we do not want to turn it end to end. We have to kill the sting of the game from minute one, whether that's by scoring an early goal or whether that's just by bopping the ball around. We have to do that. I don't want us to go there and see transition ball from both sides. I don't. Let's play Amrabat. If anything... Amrabat at times can sit deep and he can allow Kobe to like float. Kobe can float offensively. He can show his qualities on the ball in the final third. It will help. It will help a lot. I think the defence picks itself. Personally, I would play Varane instead of uh, Lindelof. Fullbacks pick themselves at the same time. Uh, offensively, with Rashford injured, sorry, with Rashford suspended and Hoyland, ooh, what is he, Hoyland? Hoyland's injured. Rashford suspended. Personally, I'm not trying to see Anthony. That brother is ass. That brother is dog shit. Yeah, I'll be real. We should leave man in Istanbul. No cap. Uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll be real. Me, I'll roll the dice. I'll, I'll go. I'll go pedestrian. I'll be real. Like he came on against Everton. He done well. He done well. And even like what Ten Hag said about him this week, which is now I've challenged him. Like I've given him. I've given him. His own personal challenge for the season, which is you keep coming off the bench and you do well. But now you need to turn those cameos off the bench into consistent performances throughout a 90 minute game. Now, of course, let's be real. You're not going to be tearing it apart for 90 minutes straight, but let's be real. I'm trying to get you from rather than turning it up for 10, 15 minutes off the bench. Now, at least start giving me like a 45, a 60 minute. And of course, with age, you can turn the 60 minutes into 70, into 80, into 90. I think he's giving him a challenge and I think the, the kid is fired up, came on against Everton, played a very good uh played a very good role in, in Martial's goal. Of course, crazy ground to start him. Of course it's a crazy ground to start, him, but I'll be real, like on the right wing, who do we have? It's either him or Astony. No cap. 
find an Istanbul cave, find an Istanbul cave and throw him in there. I swear. I would go for Pistri. I would go for Martial. I'll be honest. Like I think the goal against Everton, it's definitely a confidence boost, and I wouldn't want to risk Hoyland. I think Hoyland is definitely trained. I would definitely keep Hoyland similar to McTominay as that final roll of the dice. Because like I said, I actually want control in this game. As much as I know they're going to play a high line and it's going to give us an opportunity to expose it, I want us not to expose it at every God-given opportunity, but at times just block the ball around. So I want players good on the ball. Martial being good on the ball, it helps. So now when I look at it, I'm thinking, cool, we've got the wide players. Of course, like on the left-hand side, it'll be Garnacho, but... I would look at it and be like, okay, cool. The wide players that we have, they're direct. They're very energetic. They're very dynamic. They'll pick up the ball and constantly take on Galatasaray's fullbacks. But centrally, we will have control. But at the same time, we will have some form of quality. That's what I want. And of course, if everything goes sideways, then of course, like, we've got the palm trees on the bench and McTominay and Hoyland that can just come on. And that's when we can just start playing transition ball, route one over the top, because now we've got two players, six foot plus. So it provides, having Hoyland and McTominay to start on the bench, it gives us a different dynamic of play if things go sideways. That's what I would do. Be real prediction. I think we do concede. I really do. I think I think there'll be a period where we will struggle. But I'll be honest, fam. Like, prediction, I'm going 2-1. I'm going 2-1. Back the boys! 2-1 Man United, of course. God willing, it goes to plan. If it does it, I'm going to get killed. But the game's the game. The game's the game. Anyways, make sure to hit the like. Make sure to subscribe, as always. If you agree, if you disagree, pop it into the comments. And I will catch you guys later on today.